Okay, everyone, uh, welcome to this section of Fundamentals of Trading Part 2, uh, Trading at a Glance. And here we're going to look at principles and habits of successful traders. So these are basically uh, what most successful traders do. And I hope that you can emulate them because, uh, you know, what we need to do to be successful, the most easiest way is taking the model of someone who's already successful and just copying it, just follow his habits. Now, it's not going to be easy because most of us are taught in Forex or investing the wrong way, but uh, there's always a start in doing things right, and I hope we can start from this point. Now, uh, just before I go into the subject matter, I do want to emphasize that I do live trades on uh, my Facebook Live account, and I also comment on the markets from time to time. Could be Forex, indices, commodities, and also uh, initial public offerings. Offerings, uh, for Malaysia. Uh, there's my Facebook uh, ID, Shukri Hamid. You can also find me on my fan page at Gogo Kaching. This is uh, also on Facebook. And of course, my Instagram account is Inuk Shuk. Well, what do you know? Instagram is also for Facebook. So these are all uh, what I have on, on Facebook, in addition to uh, my website. So uh, these are the two principles uh, of trading that I apply. The first is asymmetric trading. The second is putting money in your pocket first. Now, asymmetric trading refers to a trading method whereby we trade for very, very high returns and risk very, very little. Uh, unlike uh, unsuccessful traders, very successful traders raise, uh, risk very small amounts. Now, how they do it is they make it up in returns that are many times over what they risk. This could be about a reward to risk ratio of about five times, ten times, or even higher than that. Now, we're going to take a look at a video by Anthony Robbins after this, which explains the concept of asymmetric trading. Second part is about putting money in your pocket first. Putting money in your pocket is, you know, what I like to do when I trade is when I trade, after I trade, I like to put money in my pocket first. And one of the ways to do that is to actually uh, sell instruments called options. So once you trade, you put money in your pocket first. And that money that you get by selling options is actually hedging against losses as you hold that position. Uh, until the position uh, goes in your favor. You see, because it's very hard to time the market. Probably it's a waste of time. Uh, you're going to get very stressed, you know. <laughs> you're not going to be a very happy trader. So let's watch the video by Tony Robbins now. Okay, we're back again now. What a great video by Tony Robbins, right? Uh, he showed us how to make a lot of money while risking very small amounts so that, you know, we don't blow up our account like many forex traders do. Now the second part is really putting money in your pocket. I put here an example of buying gold. So here uh, I see uh, the buy price for gold. Uh, you see there the bid price is $1,258.84 uh, while the ask price is $1,259.12. So after we buy gold, what we want to do or what we can do is actually sell a call option. Now the call option gives you the right but not the obligation to basically uh, buy uh, gold. Uh, you look there, the expiry date is 11th of November at a future date for $20.24. Uh, uh, now, that's if you want to buy a call option. Now, what we do is we like to sell a call option. You see, when we sell a call option, guess what? $20.24 goes straight into our pocket and that will be uh, credited against whatever we buy gold for. Maybe we buy gold for what? Uh, 1,259.12. So you minus that buying price by 20.24. So you kind of get a discount on the uh, price of gold. So you don't lose money if the gold goes down below 1,259. You only lose money when it goes down really below 1,239. Now, I think that's a great deal, okay? Uh, now, this is showing you on the call side. You can also buy a put option uh, to further protect your downside if gold falls. Now, that's another subject, but I just want you to understand that this is a way where when you trade, you can actually collect money up front from the broker, okay? Rather than you just buying and then praying hard that it goes into your direction. And for me, uh, this is very, very important because it allows me to wait for the position to mature while earning money. And the third thing is uh, there's an indicator in the market that's very uh, 
quite accurate. It's called commitment of traders. This shows the positioning of uh, large uh, commercial traders, large speculators, and also small traders like you and me. So depending on the positioning of all these three groups, one can basically uh, make a very, very good judgment on where the direction of the market is. So, you know, these are basically the three... Uh, uh, elements of, of trading uh, which I use a lot and I'm, I'm going to show it a lot on Facebook Live and I'm going to show it a lot how I use it uh, during the course that you're following now. So we're going to go first to uh, 11 things successful traders will never say. I'm sure all of you went through this at one point in time so let's go through it again. The first is I never take loss. Well guess what sooner or later if you have this attitude a runaway loss will definitely wipe up your account. Now, uh, I know a lot of people who have very high uh, percentage uh, uh, trades. That means they get a lot of trades in the right uh, way, you know. They, they could be like 95% or 99% right. Now, the problem with these people is here, they do not take stop losses. So they hold the account usually until the position matures and they are right. Now, the problem with doing that is you need a very, very large account to do this or if you don't want to do this, then you are just a walking time bomb because let me tell you, one day the market is going to go against you. You didn't take the stop loss because you were so confident it's going to turn around and one day the market's going to bite you and it's going to bite you hard. Now, second uh, thing that we always, we never hear traders say is that money, money management is not important. Hey, money management is so important, okay? Uh, so you, ha you have to ask yourself, how much are you risking on each trade? I think the right figure would be around 1% to 1.5%. Anything above is really higher than you should risk. Uh, third thing is averaging down is a good entry strategy. Now, why would good traders say this? I mean, this is like saying that, you know, you're wrong and you want more of something wrong. Uh, that is just not good. That's insane. Just get out of the trade and, you know, go chill, do something else come back more fresher. I can predict the short-term movements from a chart with 90% accuracy. Ho, ho, ho. Now, all successful traders know that, you know, candles are good, but candles are not 100% accurate. If you rely on them very much, you're not going to become a very good trader. You're going to lose a lot of money, actually, because trading, especially in Forex and also commodities, also depends a lot on news flows. So you got to follow the news flows. You know, if a news comes in uh, from a central bank that is raising interest rate, I don't care what the candle pattern is, most likely the currency pair will go up. Now, it's a fact that most successful traders only have 70% accuracy and even few can do better than 55% when picking their battles carefully. So you really can't can't predict the price movement. It's quite random. Okay. Uh, next, having a strategy which is profitable in all market conditions. Hey, we know that's not true. There's no magic formula for bit for this. The market conditions change from time to time, and even if you use a robot, you know, in EA or something, uh, you're advised to change the EA as the market conditions change because they're not going to work the same in every single market conditions. Now, a lot of young traders like to be in the market every day. Hey guys, don't, don't, don't do this. The markets could be behaving erratically. The markets could be misbehaving. Why be in the market if the market's like that? Just go take a rest. Go do something else. Next. The price can't just go any higher or lower. Now, this I hear a lot, even, even from me, okay? Basically, the, the price does something weird. It just goes up and up, up and up, or down and down and down. And we often say, hey, 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 no, no, no. Can't do that. It has to turn around. It has to turn around, right? Well, guess what? It doesn't, okay? And uh, re in reality, the price can do anything at any time uh, because the markets can remain irrational longer than you can remain sol solvent. So unless you have a very, very large account with very, very small positions, uh, you know, please do not uh, try to second guess the market. If your stop loss is hit, take the loss, okay? Next, I bet the farm on this trade. Oh, this is a good one. This is when you can be very, very rich by betting very, very big or using extremely high leverage. So you want to be a Jesse Livermore, but you know, guess what? He died broke. So you need a lot of luck if you're going to bet the farm every time. In fact, you need a lot of farms, okay? Uh, next is, I learned everything there is to know about trading no uh, sir, you did not learn everything. There's a need to stimulate 
your mind and to keep it sharp. So there's many, many things you can still learn about the market. Uh, I couldn't do it. Here's the next part, you know. Uh, okay, it says, now let's continue from the first part. The price can't go any higher or lower. Now this I hear a lot because, you know, especially for Forex, you know, you see the price moving up or uh, down in a single direction and it just goes in one way, you know, it just flies very strong in one way. And we often say to ourselves, hey, wait a minute, it can't be going there. That's not possible. It has to turn back. It has to correct itself. Well, let me tell you, the price can do anything it wants, you know, and the markets can remain irrational far longer than you can remain solvent. So be very careful of this. Uh, if you see price moving against you like a train in one direction, I would advise just getting out of the market. Next, I bet the farm on this trade. Oh, this is a good one. You want to be Jesse Livermore, right? The greatest stock trader of all time. But you got to know that Jesse Livermore died broke. So unless you have a lot of farms, you really do not want to bet the farm on any single trade. I learned everything there is to know about trading. Well, well, well. No, sir, you haven't done that. You always need to stimulate your mind. And trust me, there's always something new about the market. Uh, you have a great trading platform. You couldn't do it without your fantastic trading platform. Not true because trading platforms are more of a tool. They're really not a means to an end. Uh, they're quite good because they simplify things, especially the ones that simplify things. I'm entirely self-taught. So you're very clever, but hey, you know, it's better to get a mentor to do it right the first time because uh, what you really don't want to do is uh, to waste a lot of time uh, learning yourself and doing it the wrong way. There's a cost here called opportunity cost. The thing is, if you do not uh, have a mentor, it might be quite some time before you can trade profitably now. Please consider the time that you lost while learning or the, even the losses that you had to absorb while learning. All of this can be dramatically reduced if you have a mentor. Now, this is part, uh, I found this on the web, I think it's good. Uh, this is uh, the way that you need to do in order to protect your capital. Basically, uh, you need to trade to trade well, not necessarily to make money because sometimes the market are misbehaving. So you need to trade within your system. You need to fiercely protect capital. Don't try to lose it. Uh, act immediately without hesitation on qualified setup. If you see something good, just go into the market. Don't wait because we often wait uh, that's bad you know because the market runs and then we often wait and then we go in the market by the time the market is already running it turns around and we're caught with that position now uh, you also need to know that the only thing worse than being wrong is staying wrong so once you're wrong uh, if it hits your threshold level for stop loss cut loss if confused see rule two because during tough times you really really need to fiercely protect your capital and uh, this is the conclusion that that you have to make where you want to be is to be always in control never wishing always trading and first and foremost protecting your ass which is protecting your capital please don't make it a habit to blow uh, your capital away because capital is a very finite resources and as uh, uh, Keen said very famously, the markets can behave irrationally far longer than you can remain solvent. Now, this is a very uh, interesting part, or uh, this says the rules to manage drawdowns. Inevitably, we're going to get a lot of drawdowns in our trading. So, uh, this is seven good rules. First is when losing in trade after trade, lower your trading size by 50%. Trade smaller until a winning streak begins. Go even smaller if needed, or even take a break from trading you know there's no harm taking a break you can do a lot of things to your trade uh, next only risk one percent of your capital per trade uh, you must avoid the temptation to trade big to make up your losses don't ever do that because this will usually compound the problem when the market is not cooperative and uh, with your style during a trend trend third stay disciplined with your entries and exits don't get sloppy trade well okay you don't necessarily need to make money trade well Cut losses if you have problems. Four, do not abandon your method. You have to stay the course. When your method comes back in favor, you'll start winning again. That's quite obvious. Never take losses personally. It's not your fault that the market is not conducive to profits. If you are trading your trading system and you have the discipline to stick with it. Never ever fall the, into the temptation to let you losers run. As I said, sometimes the losses can get so big, you're not going to stand it and you're just going to go out and 
and bail out. And so before this happens, before it damages your account, you really need to cut your losses at predetermined stops regardless of the pain you're feeling, okay? Uh, lastly, do not stop tracking your watch list for the markets you trade. Be ready to take the right entry when it presents itself. So, you know, I see a lot of traders, they get so beat up on a string of losses that they stop focusing on their watch list and stop taking high probability entries. Basically, is you probably have a system that worked. The market is not cooperative, so it doesn't work. But you have to be there when the boat is ready to sail again. Uh, don't just drown while you're waiting on the shore, okay? Don't do that. Stick to your system. Be patient. The market will come back to you. So again, uh, this is to conclude uh, three promises that I make to all my students. I can't promise you riches, but I can promise you you won't blow your account, okay? Because the way I trade does not blow up accounts. And you can see my position uh, on Facebook Live and all that as I ride the wave in Forex indices, commodities, and Malaysia stocks, and also properties. So uh, this is it for now. We'll see you again in another module. Bye.